Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the Creality Ender 5 S1. So the Ender 5 has been around for a while, but it's not as popular as the Ender 3s. So I'm pretty excited to see what this printer has to offer. So in this video we're going to unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. Alright, so yeah, I'm really excited to check out the Ender 5 S1 as we do have quite a few upgrades that make the Ender 5 here a lot more compelling. So this is the box it comes in. It's actually not as large as you would think. And here we can see the dimensions in centimeters. And I can't really find the weight to this thing, but it definitely feels 30 plus pounds. So let's go ahead and open it up. Alright, so it looks like everything is packed in this dark soft foam. And this is what we see on top. So in this baggie we have the quick start guide with our warranty card that appear to be like stickers. So everything is very well packed and even though this printer is 95% assembled, at least what it says, there's quite a few things to put together. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to pull out parts by parts here. So we've got part of the spool holder. We've got a couple pieces that says L and R on them and almost looks like it's part of the frame of the bed. More parts here, also labeled R and L. And by the way, they are injected plastic parts. Even more pieces here. So yeah, as you can see, this is definitely assembly required somewhat. So we've got a larger piece here, which is the Z-axis frame where the bed mounts. And we got very nice quality metal here that's thick. Quite large rods for the movements. And we have the stepper motor here on top with the coupler, so. But yeah, we'll take a closer look at all these details in a bit. And here we have a box, quite a few things in there, and we'll go through this in a second. And I believe that's our first layer. And it's quite thick. So the angle is not too great, but hopefully you guys can see that. We got the upper portion next, and then our base below that. And as you guys can see, we also get a little spool of filament in PLA white. I'm going to pull out the upper portion, and you guys can see this whole thing is pretty much pre-built and it's actually a really nice piece it's all made out of aluminum channels we even get some pretty cool handles here on the side and star of the show is actually this all new hot end that looks quite unique quite a bit to see there which we'll take a closer look in a bit and also guys flip this upside down so we can maybe see it better but if you haven't been around 3d printers too much you might think that this could be a core xy machine which it is not because we have two belts here and this is our Y axis and the motors over here. So this acts just like a normal X and Y operation, which if we flip it back around, this is our Y motor and our X is up here that moves this part. So yeah, for the Ender 5, it's always been like this. I think the Ender 4 wasn't the actual Core XY, but that printer never really did good in the market as Core XY machines are quite tedious if you don't know how they work and how to adjust them. So yeah, this makes it a lot more simple and quite accessible. But yeah, with that said, this upper portion is quite nice and looks like completely pre-built and ready to install. All right, so actually the part beneath that was the bed and not the base. There's apparently one more layer and this box is quite deep. But yeah, here we have the bed and it looks like most of the installation that we'll have to do with the bed frame. So it's pre-assembled here and we have insulation on the bottom, large knobs here, very nice. And also what's great is this flexible PC sheet that's steel and it magnetizes. So using this PC sheet on other printers like the Ender 3 S1, I really like it. And actually the Ender 3 version 2 Neo has the same one here. So yeah, I really like that. And another thing that is quite a nice detail is these two little bolts. They actually help you line up the sheet before you drop it down. So you butt against them and then you can drop it and it'll be 
the same every time. If you ever removed this and you wanted to continue printing, you would never be able to set it up in the same spot. But like this, you have a much higher chance of putting the bed back exactly where it was, or at least a lot closer. Yeah, pretty cool. And the, the plug actually here that comes out here, that's rain relief. All right, so I guess we do have one more layer in there, which is kind of crazy because we've taken out quite a few things. But then again, we have more things and looks like channels for the corners and they're on both sides and they're actually also labeled which is nice and now we can pull out the base and yeah this is what it looks like it's quite clean with not too much going on here on top we have a pretty large touch screen display squishy rubber feet underneath and on the back we got the frame here and so this is like a cover and all the electronics are inside of here and then there's a bunch of wires coming out the back of it so yeah that's everything in the box so it all was packed good and very well protected and the first thing I want to do is flip this base upside down and it looks like we can take off this cover in the back and we can see what's inside. But before that, let's go ahead and check out what's in this box as there are quite a few things in here. So we got the rest of our spool holder, the power cord, which is US type, looks like about four feet or so, our spatula, it's not sharpened. So you don't really need to use this like on the bed or anything as you don't want to scratch it up, but this could be useful or get to the nozzle, grab a booger or something. So. We also get this quite long, not sharp plunger of some sort. Not too sure what it's for because it's not thin enough to clean out the nozzle. Maybe when removing the nozzle, you can clean out the whole hot end as this printer does have an all metal hot end. And here we have a PTFE tubing. And I'm guessing this is probably from the spool to the hot end. As even though it is direct drive, the spool mounts on the side of the printer. So you need to get the filament somehow there. And this is the tube you go through. So let's see what's in this bag. All right, so there's our clean out needle. So this is to clean out the nozzle if it gets clogged. We also get the snippers, and these are really nice. We get some flexible flat cable clips for cable management. Our full size SD card, which is a gig with an adapter to USB. Extra nozzle and a coupler clip, some mini zip ties, and a bunch of hardware which is all labeled on the baggies. Maybe a little hard to see, but this is everything we need to put the printer together. So yeah, again, guys, I would not call this a 10 minute assembly or whatever. This is definitely more involved, especially if you're doing this for the first time. So yeah, keep that in mind. But for the last part, we have our tools, which includes a little flat screwdriver, two open-ended wrenches. A small one here is for the nozzle and this larger one to adjust rollers and other things on the printer. And then we get a set of Allen wrenches, all the sides as you'll need to work on your printer to put it together and whatnot else. So let's go ahead and grab the correct size here for these little bolts and we'll take them out. There's only six of them and we'll see what's underneath here. All right, so we do have a large fan that's connected to the backside and the connector is hot glued. So I'm going to have to leave it like this. So let's take a closer look. So here we have the power coming in going into the power supply. It is a Creality branded, 350 watts, 24 volts. All the connections look nicely organized and crimped. Here we have a port that comes in from our bed and runs here to the main board. So this is Creality's latest boards. Not sure exactly the model number, but you guys can see it says Creality under there. So we can see the stepper drivers are integrated with heat sinks. We do have an ARM processor, full size SD card. And yeah, you can see everything is hot glued, routed and organized. And this is our touch screen board, which doesn't appear to be a Creality brand, but that's our little beeper there with SD card insertion. So yeah, very well put together and simplistic. And I like that about Creality. So let's go ahead and put this lid back back over. I'm going to put these little bolts back in and we'll flip it around and start the assembly. All right, so let's put the Ender 5 S1 together. So in this plastic bag, we have a few things starting here with some stickers and this is just one sheet. Actually, no, they are cut out. Okay, so they are individual little stickers that you can put on like your laptop or whatever you want. We got a warranty card and after sales information here on the back. Here we get a piece of paper that you can actually use for leveling and on it, hopefully you guys can see, but we have a material guide. So it kind of helps you understand what kind of speeds, retractions and temperatures that you need. And also on the back of that, we have leveling tips. So yeah, pretty cool. And of course we have the manual itself, which is this quick start guide. Very nice little booklet. Got the parts list and then symbol instructions, which there is quite a few steps, but doesn't look too complicated. But then again, there is a few things to do here. So we're going to start with step one, which is the 3.1. And that's going to be putting the four corners or the channels on the base. And we're going to need eight M525 volts. 
So that's the packet that has a bunch of them in it. And it'll be kind of hard to see maybe on video, but we can see there it says M525. We're gonna need two on each corner. And on the picture there, we can see that channel labeled with one goes up front and then two on the right back and three on the left back. And on the channels themselves, we can see that they're all labeled. Yeah, they made it quite easy and shouldn't be very difficult to figure out. All right. So let's go ahead and do the two up front. And you can't really mistake this because you have a smooth side and a groove side of the channel. And also the smooth side has the sticker on here, which goes to the front like this. And all of them are gonna face this way. And I'm gonna use a spool here to prop up the front of the printer so it's much easier to get to. But yeah, we got a couple holes in there that our bolt can go through. And we're gonna put the channel on top and run them down. And grab our largest Allen wrench. But I'm not going to snug them up yet because we want them to move a little. They might have to give some give as we assemble it. And once we get all of the main parts together, we'll tighten everything up. All right, let's do on this other side. All right, and we got both of the fronts on. So the rears are the same way. Two goes on this side and three on the other. Now for these, the channels are not smooth. You guys can see we got some drilled holes through the one on number two here. You just line up where the sticker is to the front. And we got the three here. And all of our channels are on. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Let's see what our next step is. So for step two, we're gonna be putting this upper portion onto the channels we just installed, the corners. And we're also gonna need eight M525 bolts, the same ones. And so grabbing the upper portion with the Creality logo going to the front, we're gonna set it over the channels and we should line up quite easily. And there we go, that actually sat exactly where it needs to be and so we got two bolts on each corner holding it down so yeah so far as you guys can see we only have two steps in and we pretty much have the box built so i started them all by hand and now we're going to run them down with the wrench but again don't tighten them yet just kind of get them to start snugging and then stop as we want everything to kind of line up nicely and settle in its place so if everything feels good and solid, we can go ahead and tighten all these bolts up and then also including the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you wanna snug them up reasonably, but you know, don't go crazy. Since this is kind of like a box design, it's already naturally very rigid. And that is all of them. And you guys can see that was actually not very hard at all and quite straightforward. So for the next part, we actually need to move this out of the way because we're going to be working on our build plate with the Z axis frame first before we connect it to the printer itself, which will connect here in the back. So I'm going to slide this to the side and we're going to bring this in. And actually, guys, I think the motor is the bottom, not the top. And the bed actually sits like this on top. So I'm going to run it down just a little bit here by turning this coupler and we'll grab our bed assembly and we're going to be using the same m525 bolts which there are exactly four left and on the manual they recommend using like some kind of support here piece of a foam from the box to hold your bill plate as you try to connect it but we're just going to try to do it here in the air but yeah it just simply sits like this and that's how we're going to connect it so yeah could be a little tedious here but shouldn't be too bad and probably a good idea to remove this flexible steel sheet so we don't get it greasy. And now I'm going to snug them up. And that should be good right here. And this is what it looks like. So yeah. So for the next part, we need to install the plastic supports that go underneath the bed. And that's these here. So we got a right and a left. But we need to flip this upside down. And so the right will actually be on this side if you're looking at it like this. Just like that. And... Hopefully you guys can see that, but yeah, it just sits around the bearing here and then there's a thread here that a bolt goes through. On the other side of the bearing, we have like a cap with two brass threadings that will go around and that's how we're going to clamp it down. So yeah, I guess this is extra support for the bed. So the bolts that go up front here are M520s, which there's a separate bag for that. So I'm going to start this one and then for the clamping, is the M525s and there's actually a separate bag for that also with exactly the four bolts we need. Put the cover there and then run our bolts through and just like that. So yeah guys, not very hard to figure out. Quite simple actually. So M520 up front and then M525s for this cap. Now one thing I forgot to mention is that on the cap there's like a little cutout and the cutout actually goes down and that's how they will mount. So now we just need to 
tighten everything up. So for this, you want to kind of push it down because it's a clamping force. So it's not anything tightening it down. So push it down and then clamp it with the bolts. And I would recommend doing this side first before tightening this bolt. And don't go crazy on this as it doesn't need to be crazy tight. And now we can go ahead and tighten this bolt and snug it up. And this side is done. So we'll do the same thing on this side. All right, we are finished with assembling our build plate. And you guys can see what that looks like. So yeah, now we can bring our printer back in. And hopefully you guys see these holes here. That's where it's gonna mount. So now we just have to figure out how to bring it in. We do need to lower the bed all the way down. So I'm just pushing it. And then we're gonna go into it like this, with the motor on the bottom. And then kind of like set it inside this gap. And then we're gonna lift the printer because we need to get this piece on the other side of this channel. Just like that. And then kind of pull our back. And then it's all gonna line up. So it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, if you just go down with the bottom first, it'll kind of make sense and then lift the whole printer and this kind of goes under it. And there's the shaft that it has to clear too. So it's all kind of like a tight fit, but it does go in actually quite easily. And maybe I could demonstrate it one more time here from the side. It might be a little bit easier to see. So basically we got the bed all the way down. They were coming in like this on an angle. And then you want to be with the back all the way touching here while raising the whole printer on the top. And then the top portion will clear this channel and go underneath it and then kind of fall down. And now it's in there. Hopefully that made sense. And so for the next part, we're going to use M530 bolts to secure it, which is in its own packet. And there are four of them, which will go through these larger holes here into our Z-axis assembly. So honestly, guys, I'm thinking that this is much easier than I anticipated from the beginning, as we're mostly just putting larger pieces together. So now we need to snug these four bolts up nice and tight. But again, don't go crazy. Just whenever you start feeling good resistance, stop. You don't want to strip the threads. Just like that, we are done with this step. So for the next part, we're going to be installing these braces. And they go in the corner on the back of the printer. And that's these here. And the way they want you to install the left and right is the left will go on this side with the L pointing up and the R like this. Not sure why that matters because they look exactly the same, but maybe it does. In any case, we need to flip the printer around. Probably better to see here from the angle but yeah since this is the right side we can put the r up like this and it literally just kind of sits in the channel just like that and there's threads that line up in the channels m520 bolts will go through so i'm going to go ahead and remove this sticker in the back since we don't need it there anymore so it's easier to do this if you put the bolt on the wrench and then kind of go into it all right so the right side's done and now we can do the left. So I guess I'm going to put the L to the top. Remove the sticker here. And these braces will give us rigidity in the frame. All right. So this thing's coming along pretty quick and looking really nice. I'm going to go ahead and peel these stickers off too. So for the next part, we have the spool holder, which mounts on the right side of the printer, right over here. And you guys can probably see these threaded holes. And that simply puts the spool holder right here. Now we can go ahead and mount the plastic piece to it and there's like a locking nut that goes on there and then tightens itself. We're gonna install it towards the smooth side and so we're just gonna line up the nut and then churn it with our hand here and it all locks in and just like that. And the two bolts that hold the spool holder down is the silver M514 bolts in its own pack. So we're gonna line it up here. Maybe we can flip to this side. You guys can see the actual bolts there. So this is a little fiddly to get in because the wrenches don't have a ball point at the end. So a little harder to run the bolt down, but not too bad. So before you tighten it, try to line up the spool holder here flat with the channel. And now we can snug these up and that's it. So yeah, making really good progress. So for the next part, we're just gonna be plugging everything in, all our wiring and also installing our PTF tubing there on the top and kind of organizing the wires and things like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and go to the back. And first thing we can go ahead and connect is the cable coming from the bed. And I'm going to go ahead and raise this. And that plugs in right here on the back of the control unit. So there is a slot. It lines up. And when you line it up, it kind of goes in. And then there's a locking washer that locks it. So that's in. We got a couple wires here. And maybe I can zoom you guys in a bit. But yeah, there's two wires. And one of them goes to the motor, which is down here. You guys probably can't see, but it's the larger one. 
that's going to plug down there and then the smaller one plugs right here to the end stop switch and the wiring actually has labeling on it which says z so this is for the z axis then we got a whole pack of wires here going up and so the flat one will actually go to the hot end which we'll deal with in a second. But these here, the smaller ones, we can see the labels on them. These are Y motor or end stop switch. And this one is D, which I'm guessing is for the filament detector right here. So let's do the Y axis first. Hopefully you guys can see that, but we're in the right back corner where our Y motor and end stop switch is. And so we're gonna come here from the back and connect the motor and also the end stop switch. Yeah, a little hard to see, but yeah, hopefully you guys saw that. So that's where these two go. So you guys were just looking in this corner and now we're looking over here which is where the filament detector is and, and that's the wire with the D on it or at least that's what mine says and plugs in right here. So if we look here on the bottom we have this flat cable coming out here and that's actually going to run through here and then to the top. And so right here we have kind of like a little clip or cable management that this thing should fit in which it does tightly. You guys can see that. We do have some cable clips that we can use here to make this look all nice, but the top two cables have our x-axis plugs and also the main plug for the hot end. So the x-axis motor and end stop switch is right here. So the end stop switch is the smaller one and the motor is the larger one and the wires are labeled x. And then if we flip to the front, maybe you guys can see here, this is where our main ribbon cable plugs in and there's a couple tabs you gotta spread apart. And then when you plug it in, it's gonna kinda lock together. And then we can tuck this cable into this relief bracket here. So yeah. And so for the last part we need to install is this PTF e-tubing, which goes from here all the way back to our detector. The reason we need this is because our spool holders down here on the side has to somehow feed through here. Now if it was mounted on top, you can feed straight down to this. And so it appears that this piece here, it comes off. Most likely there's a brass insert in there. So if you're going to build something custom to feed from the top, that can possibly work without using this tube. But the way it's intended here is the tube goes inside there and the other end goes into the detector. There is a little clip in the spare parts that we can use to lock it in. Just like that, so now it's not gonna come out easily. Now this other end actually comes off really easy and I think that's done on purpose, just in case you need to feed it in yourself. But yeah, with this tubing here, you know, it's gonna be quite tedious somewhat to have to push the filament all the way through yourself until the direct drive can actually grab it. So yeah, I think the fastest way would be just to push it through here and then grab it yourself, push it down and then put the PTFE tubing in. But then again, you know, you could modify to have something coming down from the top and feeding it. So we also have this little cable clip here and I think, it goes somewhere on top where it kind of holds them together and it does kind of twist. Yeah, not sure exactly <laughs> that's how it goes, but something like that. And this thing can travel any direction. All right, it appears that maybe this cable here also needs to go. That's the one for the X axis all together because it's kind of just dangling around and it needs to move also with all of the other cables. Actually, yeah, that works really good right there. So yeah, that's pretty much how this part goes on. So the only thing we really have left to do is use these cable tie or clips to organize our cable here on the side. And the way this works, it just clips around into the channel vertically like this. But yeah, kind of like that. And that really cleans up the look. Actually, I'm thinking this cable probably should have went in there too. So in any case, guys, you get the point. You can put these clips in here, however many you need. This cable here needs to be loose because it needs to go up and down. So yeah, so I'm going to clip them back out and actually run all of the cables together. We'll get a much cleaner look here out of our cable management. So yeah, that's actually all of them. Maybe this is a little overkill for this, but it tucks it in really nice and looks great. And so that concludes pretty much everything with assembly on this printer. So as you guys saw, that wasn't very hard and quite straightforward. Now, because our whole upper portion here with everything that moves was pre-assembled, it should be all adjusted and the way it needs to be. So if you want to, you can check it. There's rollers here on top and also rollers on the side. So all of mine are perfectly adjusted. So if yours are not, the rollers on the bottom do have eccentric nuts. Same thing for the hot end and this other side too. And this would be the wrench that you use to adjust that. And with the belts, you can kind of see them running here. It looks pretty good. And also we got belts here 
on both sides and you can kind of check that all too so all right so let's take a closer look at the ender 5 s1 so you guys can see it's not that large actually the footprint on the bottom is similar to an ender 3 s1 or s1 pro it is a little bit taller obviously because of all that and maybe a little wider because of the spool holder but it's not that deep as you guys can see so so there's quite a few things to look at but let's start here on the top with our most interesting and impressive piece here which is the hot end direct drive extruder assembly so it's quite an interesting looking design here we have a metal plate with Creality logo. Beautifully constructed. Very interesting to look at. So on the top, this is where our cable comes in. We do have strain relief. It is a plastic strain relief, so it's bendable. The extruder mechanism is towards the front. There's a motor here for that. It is all plastic, but seems to be pretty durable. Going down from there, we can see our heat break, and there's a little bit of a gap between the heat break and the extruder. So that's quite interesting as it's not combined like on the S1 and S1 Pro. And I think separating might help with heat creep going up into the extruder but you guys can see this pretty tall here where the filament goes in and where it comes out so the whole frame is metal with different parts attached to it we do have a junction board back there and on the very back we have for the parts cooling with this quite unique looking 3d printed fan duct so it's one blower that splits in two and then blows here underneath the nozzle and the CR touch there is nestled right behind it or in front of it I guess on the inside and this is our heat block it is insulated and then our 0.4 nozzle tip yeah overall very unique and interesting how it's all assembled and you guys can see we got a pretty large heat break fan right there in the front and our cable comes out and goes all the way down into the base down there. So the way this printer works is like a normal X and Y printer so Y is like this front to back and then X is the hot end. This is not a core XY machine and so we got our Y motor here turns a belt on each side which connects to these ends here and it all moves together and our X motor is on the Y assembly and the belt goes through here and moves this so and so our home position would be in stop switch there for the Y and X here and the bed actually goes all the way down as the in stop switch is on the bottom so yeah, overall you guys can see everything is built really nice and it's nice how it all comes assembled. So looking at the Z axis, we've got two rods, looks like about 12 millimeters maybe. Might be larger than that. And then we have a pretty typical lead screw with an anti-backlash mechanism there with the spring. And that makes it where the bed just doesn't fall down on its own. So even though the bed mounts only there on those two rods, it's actually still very firm. You guys can see I'm pushing it here on the front and it's barely flexing. And I think these supports here have a lot to do with that as it's quite a bit more sturdy than you would think for this kind of setup and speaking about the bed we do have a 220 by 220 by 280 tall print volume which is quite good and this is our magnetic mat the two little bolts there that help us line up the PC steel sheet that's flexible so these work really well I'm glad it's on this printer some do say they stick too well but normally for me in the past these worked excellent so we got the steel sheet the aluminum heated part and you guys can see we are insulated on the bottom which is nice to see even though not really necessary for this size bed but it will heat up really quick so it's nice that they included that so as far as the frame of the bed it's made out of channels you guys can see it and maybe this is another reason why it's so sturdy. But yeah, with the supports there and the channels, it's quite incredible how sturdy this thing is. And we have large adjustable knobs to level each side. So our lead screw goes down to the coupler and the motor back there. You guys can see this is where it plugs in and also the Z axis switch is back there. We do get these nice braces on each side, make it all even more rigid. And looking on the right side of the printer, we have this spool holder, which will hold filament and then it can come out right here into the detector, and then out into the tube to the hot end. So not too much going on on the base, quite clean. We do have a manufacturing sticker, gives us some basic information. And on the very front, we have a reasonably large touchscreen display. So it looks a little plain here. Normally you'd have some kind of writing or something, but it's just clean and nothing there. And going down here, you guys can see on all the corners, we have protection here, bottom and the top. And going this way on the right side, we have full size SD card slot and also a USB type C connection there. And to the left, we got the power input port. It is fused with a on and off button. And the whole printer is sitting on four rubber feet. They're pretty squishy and that should help with noise and vibration. So let's go ahead and flip this thing around to the back. And I do like these handles and they're on both sides where you can pick up the printer and move it around. That's really convenient. And this is what it looks like from the back side. You guys can see the cable management here. 
Very nice. Our bed cable is strain relief going down to the base and it is removable and we can see where all the cables go inside. But the more important thing back here that we need to absolutely check is our voltage. So depending on where you live, you're gonna set that to 230 or 115. So in the US, we need 115. So I need to switch that over. But if you live like in Europe, most likely you're at 230. So make sure you check that before you power the printer on. These are our caps here that clamp together around the bearings. And this is actually our, the pin that pushes on the end stop switch. And it looks like maybe it could be adjusted if needed. But yeah, overall very nice and well built printer. And aesthetically very pleasing here sitting on the desk. So for the next part, let's plug it in, power it on. We'll preheat it, home it, and level the bed. All right, so I got the printer plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, so it does power up. I heard the CR touch there. And it looks like we got the Creality logo coming up on the screen. All right, very cool. So it does look like we have a new style menu, which is quite interesting. And we'll look at it a little closer here in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Prepare. And we'll click on Home here in the middle under the axes move. Okay, so we got the X moving. And then the Y going back. That's working. And I guess the Z moves separately, so there's a separate home here for the Z. Let's try that. And there it goes. So it moves down pretty quick, which is a good thing because that would be not cool if it moved slow like some do. All right. So now I'm gonna click on temperature settings and we're gonna preheat PLA. There's a hot button and that's gonna go 205 on the nozzle and 60 on the bed. And so I'm gonna grab my little leveling tip paper and we're gonna use this to level the bill plate. So let's go back to axes move. All right, so we need to go to settings. So we're gonna click on a leveling method. And so we have a couple choices here. We've got AUX leveling and auto leveling. So the first thing we wanna do is AUX leveling because we do have knobs here. We need to get the bed as flat as possible. And then we'll use the auto leveling, which is gonna be the CR touch. That's gonna to measure the bed and then compensate as it prints. So here we have a home button. Let's go ahead and click that. And that's gonna set us up for the leveling. I really love how quick the Z-axis moves. That's a great feature. All right. And so now we can go to the four corners and also the middle. So we'll start with number two, which is this corner here. We'll get our paper and put it between the nozzle and the bed. So you do want to be preheated, which we are. And we're too loose, so I'm going to unscrew this side until we get a little drag. And there we go. Now we're going to go to this corner, which is number three. All right, when we get a drag, go to four, five, and then back to two. And you wanna go around at least a couple times because as you change one corner, other corners kind of change too. So the closer you get it, the less offset the out of bed leveling will have to do. So let's go to the middle. And we're a bit loose or there's a bigger gap, but that's okay. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we have the out of bed leveling. We're gonna click on out of level right here and it's gonna ask us to start. And so I guess it wants to go all the way down because that's where the end stop switch is. All right, now the bed's going back up, but slower than normal, which is interesting. And I don't know if you guys can see, but our CR touch there is out and ready to probe. All right. So double probes. And it looks like there's going to be four across and four deep, which is 16 points. All right, and we are done with leveling. So let's go back home and let's go ahead and take a closer look at what's on the screen. 
All right, so we got hot buttons here on the side, home, print, prepare, and settings. So on home, this is what we see with the little Creality guy there. We got the nozzle temperature and the target, which is at zero because it's off. The bed temperature and the target, the speed, and the Z-axis offset looks like. And then we got a stop and play button. If we click on print, this is where we're going to read our SD card, which we don't have inserted yet. Under prepare, we got three submenus, axes move, in and out, and temperature settings. So under axes move, we can home the X and Y and also the Z here separately. This is the core coordinates and then the amount if you want to move it manually by clicking the arrows. In and out is going to be our filament extruder controls and then temperature setting is going to be for the hot end, the bed, and then PLA preheat and ABS. We also have cooling and fan controls. Under settings we got device, advanced settings, and about. So under device we got PLA preheating, ABS preheating, the leveling button, and the language. And under language this is all the different ones that are available go back advanced settings we got run out sensor on or off restore all movement and temperature PID and about is information about our printer so yeah pretty straightforward and easy to use and the screen is very responsive and really a nice resolution so let's click on prepare temperature and preheat PLA and by the way in settings this is where you set the temperatures for that so we can see we're preheating to those targets let's grab our SD card which is full size, eight gig, very nice. And if you guys remember, it does plug here on the right side, upside down, then we'll click on print. And sure enough, we have a couple files that are included. So I guess we'll start with the rabbit and I'm guessing the boat is probably a benchy. So yeah, I might just print both of those out. And so before we can start our print, we need to put some filament in and I'm gonna use this blue filament that I have on a spool. We're gonna cut it on an angle so it's easier to feed throughout the tubing and and it's gonna go here on the spool holder. And let me just turn this to the side so you guys can see a little better. Putting the spool holder where the filament rolls out this way, out into the filament detector here on the side. And there's a little light that glows up when it goes through. And I don't know if you guys can see, but we're pushing the filament through the tube. And probably the easiest thing to do is pull the tube out and then push the filament through and then grab it and put it in manually. So there's a lever here we have to pull on and then we can put the filament through there. Now I'm just gonna go all the way down, turn this back until it comes out the other end. And you guys can see it's purging out. So this is probably the easiest way to do it. And then you can just put the tube back in and you're ready to go. You can use the extruder controls in here, but because it's a direct drive, it's much easier just to push it through yourself. So let's click on this little rabbit. And I guess we gotta push play here. And there it goes, it started. So it looks like the bed's gonna have to come down and home. So let's pause there for a second. Homing again. Yeah, now look at that, how quick that Z axis is moving up. So yeah, even though there's a little bit of waiting up and down, but it's not bad because it moves quite quick. And there it goes. And actually guys, I just forgot that we did not adjust the Z axis offset. So I totally forgot to do that after we did the out of bed leveling. And I could tell that it's way too high. So let's go ahead and stop this before it goes anywhere else. And so let's go back to settings, leveling, and under AUX leveling, we have the offsets here that we forgot to go back and do. So let's go ahead and set it up for home. All right, now we can set our Z axis offset. And you guys can see we're way too high or too loose. So let's go ahead and bring it down. Okay, so pushing down is actually making the bed go down. So we need to go up. Okay, now it goes into minus. Okay, so if you hold it, it can actually go pretty quick. I'm getting close, not quite there. Oh, there we go. Starting to catch. Yeah, make it just a little looser maybe. Mine ended up being minus 0.85 millimeters offset. So yours could be different a bit, but yeah, we definitely needed to do that after we did the out of bed level. Or you could do it after the manual one, it doesn't really matter. But in any case, now that that's set, we can go back, back to print, grab it, we'll start it, and we'll try again. All right, so that does look a little better there. I need to get a little closer, but yeah, so I'm actually minus 1.50, so I'm not sure what happened, but I had to go quite a bit more there. And so it's printing really quick, even the first layer. It looks like this thing is sliced to print really fast. Let's go ahead and zoom in into the screen here and check out what kind of options we have as we're printing. So it looks like this 
half here changes to the printing and then this one still stays the way it is and you can't do anything on that side obviously as it's printing but here we can see it says the file that is printing then we have the percentage with the progress circle and how much time passed three minutes then we got the nozzle temperature and the target the bed temperature target the speed and the z axis offset you guys can see we're set at minus 1.55 then we got a stop and a pause button so i'm guessing to adjust anything is we click on something here we got parameter settings menu and i'm guessing you can click on anything well okay you do have to click on one of these here so we get nozzle temperature adjustments heat bed adjustment print speed fan control run out sensors on power outage is on and happy to see this feature because i think once we do spiralized mode we would need to turn this off as if you guys know that most printers have problems if the power recovery is on so i'm really happy to see this and then we have the z-axis compensation up and down so yeah very cool and you pretty much have everything you need so i'm gonna let you guys hear what the printer sounds like So I definitely say that it's more on the quieter side than louder, but you know, not very quiet as we do have some of that sound from the motor coming, but it is running really quick right now. But as far as fan noise, it's quite moderately low. So it looks like everything is working great and it's printing really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and print this little rabbit out and we'll also print out the boat that was included and see what these prints turn out like. All right, so our little rabbit and looks like the Benchy have printed out and I was pretty impressed of how quick it was printing as it appears they're sliced to print quite quick because the rabbit finished in about 15 minutes or so and the Benchy only took one hour and 10 minutes looks like and you guys saw how the screen dims down after a while so that's a nice little feature. So yeah, very quick for both of these prints. So let's go ahead and check mark that and it goes back to our main menu all right so let's see what we got here we'll look at this little rabbit first yeah for how quick it printed it actually looks very very good so if i get a little closer you guys can see how smooth the layers went down very impressive we do have a little bit of ghosting or ringing whatever that is but and even under here this part usually never turns out great especially at fast speeds but yeah it did all right and on the other side there looks pretty good too yeah the face here very nice and the ears also look great there's a little bit more layering there almost no stringing at all and our bottom also looks really good so yeah impressive let's check out this benchy and it's still stuck on the bill plate let's see how easy it comes off oh look at that no problem at all so with this bed type you have to be a little farther away than closer as it does stick very well and you guys saw that popped off really easy and that's what the bottom looks like very nice so the back there a little messy but we have high speed here and looking at our walls uh, there's something a little weird there but other than that it actually looks really good surprisingly good actually for how quick that was there's usually a lot of ghosting around these parts here we almost have no ghosting which is quite incredible and our walls look great including the overhangs there in the back we can see a little bit more ringing there the box and the top so yeah overall very solid for the speed and i think they're trying to you know show off the speed is why we have these test files as printing fast which you know it is advertised at 250 millimeters a second i would assume that would be acceleration speed and not you know actual printing speed as you know directions change your speed really slows down so i can see realistically maybe 120 to 50 would be about what it could do maybe i'll try to print out a few calibration cubes at certain speeds and we can see how they will look between each other for the next part let's go to the slicer and we'll slice a couple of our own prints and see how they turn out all right so we're at the computer and I got the SD card plugged in let's go ahead and open it up and this is what we see so we got the two G codes and also a zip file that looks like we need to unpack and that's gonna give us another folder let's go ahead and open it up and we can see here we got quite a few other folders so let's open up the first one which is just PDFs of the manual in different languages so it's basically the same thing as the manual in PDF form so it's nice to have a digital manual that you can look through on the computer next folder we got is software and drivers so they're including the Creality Slicer for Windows. 
got a video here of how to unbox it and set it up. Material guide, which is that sheet of paper that was included with the printer. So for PLA, you guys can see the retraction is 0.8 millimeters at 30 millimeters a second on the speed. And the recommended printing speed is 120 to 250, which is quite interesting that it's that quick. And you guys can see they break down a bunch of other materials. So we're gonna try slower speeds and then we're gonna bump it up also and see what happens. The last one here is the two 3D models in STL form, which is the Vinci and the Little Rabbit. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and open the slicer and I'm gonna use Cura this time around. And you can use Creality Print or whatever you want to technically. But for getting started, we'll use Cura and over here we can choose the printer type and I think I do have a Ender 5 yeah here we go I do have a profile for Ender 5 I probably need some adjusting but if you're just starting you're gonna get this menu here and you're gonna click on non-network printers and you're gonna find Creality and then you can see here on the very bottom we got Ender 5 and there's also the plus but yeah and also in the machine settings we're gonna have 220 by 220 by 280 as our printing volume so let's go ahead and drag something in here and we'll do with the little calibration cube. You can move it around or you can use these arrows to move it. And on the side here, you can, guys can see we got some buttons. So the first one's move. The next one down is scale and you can either type it in in millimeters or percentages and then rotate also. But the more important settings are up here with our profile. Let's zoom in into this cube a little bit. And let's just go ahead and go through this real quick. So if you click on these little dots, we want to go to advance. So under the first section, we got quality, layer height 0.2 is good and everything looks fine here under shell we want to change the wall count to three that'll make our walls nicer and top layers to five as it helps fill in the gaps on top so under fill gaps you can click everywhere or nowhere i'm going to choose nowhere for now infill density let's turn this down to 15. printing temperatures we'll keep 200 on the nozzle and 50 on the bed printing speed let's turn this down to 50 for starters and we'll print at faster speeds but i want to see how it'll print at these kind of speeds as that's how i normally test every printer our first initial layer will Turn that down to 15, and then the brim and skirt to 25. Under travel, retractions are enabled. With retraction distance, we'll put at one millimeter with 30 millimeters a second for the speed. So they did say 0.8, but normally it needs a little more. So I'm gonna try one millimeter, but you know, you can go down or up a little, depending on what kind of results you get. So everything here looks good. Print cooling, we'll put the regular fan speed to six layer. If you're gonna do supports, you're gonna adjust that here. For build adhesion, I like to use skirt as it prints around the print a few layers, which we got three here, and then starts printing the print straight to the bed. And you can do brim, which puts layers around the print and then touching it, and that helps it stick if you have sticking problems. And then raft builds a whole raft underneath the print, which I do not recommend as it wastes time and material. The skirt usually works best, and for this build plate that we have, this should be perfect. And down here we have special modes, which is spiralized mode, and if we click that, we can print spiralized, which will be a few layers on the bottom and then one layer all the way around and I was glad to see that we could turn off the recovery mode right on the printer but we're gonna try this mode out also but yeah that's pretty much it guys except for one more thing if you click on the dots here and go to expert and scroll down to travel and then a little farther down in the travel you're gonna see retract before outer walls I like to uncheck that as it makes the walls look a little nicer where there's a lot of retractions but yeah that's pretty much it and go back to advance here and we are done with our profile so let's go ahead and slice it there's a blue button here. It's gonna take 35 minutes and we can save it straight to the removable from here and that's saved. So I'm gonna double click here and clear the build plate. And we'll also throw a benchy in here and I'm gonna push it back just a little bit. And the reason I'm pushing it back, I had a few questions about this is because of the GoPro. I usually put it somewhere here on the build plate. Of course for this printer, since the build plate doesn't move much, I can actually have the GoPro anywhere to get those time lapses. But yeah, I usually push back so I have more in focus because it's so close to the print. But a lot of times if you print in the same spot a lot, let's say in the, right in the middle, you kind of wear out the build plate there. So pushing the model around as you keep printing is a good idea also to kind of evenly wear the build plate. So, you know, just move it a little to the left, a little to the right, whatever. In any case, we're gonna slice this one too. And this is only gonna take one hour and 50 minutes. And if we click on the preview here, right next to the save, you guys can see we can actually view each layer and things like that. So, all right, so we're gonna save that also. And we can eject the file right here from the slicer or the SD card so yeah now we can go to the computer and print these models out so hopefully this little quick overview was helpful
All right, so the calibration and Vinci are printed out and they turned out really good, but there is an issue. Let's look at the cube here and maybe you guys can see the issues down here. There's something weird going on there and also pretty much around the whole print sort of which is kind of bizarre to be honest but if we ignore that and look at the walls we can see that they're actually laying down very nicely except that we do have some ringing and ghosting on the x not severe but it is there the y is actually much cleaner which is interesting i'm guessing the double belt on each side is helping control the movement better so almost no ghosting and very very slight or zero vibration so so this is the x wall it actually looks pretty good and the y wall so yeah it's mostly when it turns that the ghosting pops up and here we have the top and the bottom so yeah everything looks good except for this weird part underneath what's interesting is that benchy also got it and it's still stuck let's see how easy it comes off again very easy so yeah the build plate works very well yeah looking at the benchy you guys can see we got the same kind of line all around it which is really bizarre again i'm not sure what's going on there but if we look at the walls themselves everything looks great there's almost no ghosting very very minor ringing or anything like that so yeah it looks really good we got the box there with the slit the overhangs are great so cooling is really good and the top looks great also great print overall but something weird going on with the bottoms and if we look at our blue benchy we actually had the same thing happen on one of the sides here yeah i'm not sure maybe our sd card is corrupt or something else is going on because the bunny didn't have it at all so yeah i'm gonna uh print out some more stuff and we'll see if this problem persists and maybe i'll try to use the reality print software to see if that makes it go away and also i want to do some tpu printing and maybe throw something like abs on here and see how that does All right, so these are all the prints that we printed with the Ender 5 S1. And the main thing I took away from using this printer is how rock solid it is because of its design and construction, which works very well with the new hot end and giving this printer the ability to print much quicker than a normal i3 bed slinger. And I also like that the form factor is not that large, let's say compared to an Ender 3 S1 and the overall feeling of a more higher end robust printer. So there's a few things to talk about here as we did have a phenomena that I could not figure out as I was printing out the prints and that is the weird layering on the bottom like we saw here so the interesting part it just came and go as it please seemed like but it was always in the same area I tried different slicers I tried different SD cards I tried turning some features on and off like the power recovery and whatnot else and yeah just nothing seemed to be too obvious of what's going on so I'm assuming this is just my special case and I think maybe a former update might do the trick to fix that but with that said let's go ahead and look at what we printed here so if you guys see here on the bottom by the screen we have a lot of cubes they're kind of hard to see because they're all black so the first one we've seen the second one I printed bumping up the speed a bit so this is the original one and you guys can see the ghosting went away so this printer seems to prefer higher speeds including the Y also looks a tiny bit better but yeah as far as the walls they practically look identical so yeah not too much to see there and the next cube over is 60 millimeters a second which is the same thing as the other one but what was interesting about this one is the weird artifacts there on the bottom the phenomena was kind of less on this one can't remember exactly what I did to try to see if I could figure out what it was but yeah the next one we got is 80 and you guys can see it still looks good there's a little bit more ghosting the Y looks pretty good so this is 80 millimeters a second then we have 100 still looks really good a little bit of ghosting there but not bad at all 
and yeah super solid and then we got 120 starting to get a little more sloppy but still very clean and you guys can see I mean it's quite respectable for that kind of speed and then we got 150 millimeters a second and we can kind of see a little bit more ghosting there and some vibrations but again still very nice so yeah you could definitely keep bumping this thing up and most likely go to 200 and maybe even 250 as advertised and still get something reasonable out of it. Now what I did notice though as you go up in speed that doesn't seem to really help save a lot of time. So what I've noticed maybe 120, 100, even 80 would probably be ideal depending on what you're printing and what material and you know what kind of quality you're looking for. And one thing to mention about speeds that this printer will be or is already compatible with the Sonic Pad and if you want to really crank up the speed you could use that and get the most out of this thing. Alright so let's look at some of these PLA prints. So we saw the Benchy, the Bunny in the beginning, the calibration cube with our black Benchy. Here we have a print that could have turned out great but it failed because of the phenomena here. So this is a gear. According to what I could see it looked like it was going to be the perfect gear until this problem that this printer keeps having for some reason fused the gears between each other. You guys can see the layers are all sitting very nicely and even but it is not functional and fused together. So I went ahead and just let it print out as I knew that it probably wouldn't work. The next print here we have is in this matte PLA from Creality and we got like these polygons and it looks really good overall everything sits very even there's nothing too weird or overhangs but if we look on the very bottom we can see there's the phenomena still there all around his tail there so yeah it does appear pretty much on all the prints but not every single one of them which is interesting so the frog also got that treatment but it's a little less noticeable and you guys can see how well the layer sit so to bring the point home, the layer adhesion and accuracy is excellent. So there's no issues whatsoever with that. Our overhangs are all perfect and that dual parts cooling fan duct working very well. If we look here on the back, we can see that little layer right there kind of going around a bit. But it didn't affect this print at all mostly, just a tiny bit, which is quite interesting. Yeah, and also the one millimeters retraction seemed to be just right for all the prints also. And here we got a pretty interesting print, which is an octopus. And it also suffered from the phenomena. Because of that, some of these parts are stuck together because they're fused at that area. But yeah, if we look at the layer lines, and the way they went down, yeah, overall, a beautiful little octopus. And so those are all the PLA prints. So I went ahead and tried some TPU, and that's this rocket here, and this thing turned out excellent. There was just a little bit of something funny here, but this is TPU, and this is in spiralized mode, which is quite incredible. So it's very thin, and you guys can see, I can completely bend this thing up, and it'll bounce right back, because it's TPU. The layer adhesion is just beautiful. And what's cool is that this printer does have power recovery mode option where you can turn it on and off. So when you turn it off, you're going to get beautiful, perfect, spiralized mode prints. And I did a little test on the bigger rocket, which we'll look at in a second, that shows how effective that is. Yeah, I love TPU prints as they're super fun, depending on what you print, and quite undestructible, depending on the application. So very pleased with that. So let's go ahead and look at the rocket. So this is printed all the way of maximum 280 millimeters tall. And you guys can see that's how tall that is. And that's definitely the limit because the bed is almost touching the base. So the rocket turned out pretty good. We had a little bit something funny there, but the walls look great. There is a little bit of vibrations in the walls, but they're ever so slight. Overall quite solid and very even. Very minor ghosting or at all. You can maybe see there just a little bit. But yeah, very clean. And as we get closer here to the top, you can see how smooth that is. And I don't know how easy that would be to see, guys. But if you see this section right here, it looks a little funny and twirly. This is where I turned on the power recovery mode. And it started stuttering. And it leaves like these artifacts. And then I turned it off from here. And it printed smooth to the ball. Finished the ball perfectly and nothing melted so yeah very good cooling on this printer now the last two prints are these wheels here they're actually still stuck to the bed and what's impressive about these is that they are printed in ABS and you guys can see there's no warping or anything weird and also this printer had no trouble whatsoever preheating to 100 degrees on the bed and 270 on the nozzle so I haven't pulled them off let's see how easy it is with this flexible bed so they are kind of stuck on there somewhat 
a little more than I wanted to, and I think I didn't compensate the extra heat of expansion, so I was probably too close to the build plate. But yeah, it's sticking too well, to be honest. And I think with this kind of PE sheet, you gotta be a little more careful with how close you print, because it does stick a little better than usual. Yeah, but this shouldn't be too hard to clean up. It pops right off, just kinda, yeah. Gotta take the extra time, and plus ABS is a little more brittle than usual. But yeah, if we grab a wheel here, you guys can see that it printed out very nicely and everything looks even and super strong, obviously, as it is ABS. We do have supports back here. Let's see if we can break them loose. All right. That worked out perfect. Look at that. Just got to clean up the edges here a bit. And we'll have a wheel here for a little RC car for drifting. So these are quite fun to print as they're consumables. And this printer has no issues whatsoever with printing hotter temperatures. So yeah, I think this printer is overall pretty impressive for what it is. And it is built like a tank. And I love these handles that you can just grab it and carry it around. And so what you're getting here is a very well built solid frame that has no flex at all in it. A pretty incredible 300C all metal hot end. Also with the Sprite direct drive extruder and the ability to print much quicker than usual. Other things to note, we got a filament detector, a CR touch that does out of bed leveling, power loss recovery, which can be turned on or off, a very reasonable 220 by 220 by 280 tall volume, the PC flexible sheet that's magnetic, works very well, but sticks a little more than usual, which I think will wear in eventually. It'll be easier to use over time. Very nice size touch screen with a great UI. And I also love the full size SD card. So yeah, guys, as you can see, it's a great printer for someone that wants this kind of design. So if you're into high speed hot printing, this is what it's really built for. And also combining this with the Sonic Pad would give it even greater abilities. So yeah, and with that said, if you guys are interested in this printer, I'm gonna have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you did enjoy this video, then hit that like button. Also check out my 3D printing playlist. I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. And if you guys wanna support my new channel called Just Print, I would really appreciate it. And eventually all 3D printing stuff will be posted there. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.